Hey guys, what's up? Thank you so much for tuning in today here at Elevate Church. We know that today's message is going to rock your world and elevate your life to the next level. So sit back, relax, and enjoy the message. How's everybody doing tonight? Are we excited? Today is a very, very good night for miracles. How do I know that? Because we just proclaimed it, right? We just sang about it. But tonight is a very special night because I get to share the pulpit with, I think, one of the greatest preachers that I know. And this woman is a woman. I can say it's a young lady that I'm so proud of her. And uh, I can be biased, but I'm not. Okay, so... Because when, when you hear her name, you're going to be, oh, because it's, it's Alexis Royce. So I just want to invite my daughter. She's going to be sharing uh, with, with, uh, with you tonight. I believe that she has a word from heaven. And we're just going to tag team. Can you see where the beauty comes? <laughs> but not the voice. It's special. Oh, wow. Where is Brenda with the but um bomb right? Just kidding. Well, I'm really excited to speak with you guys tonight. My mom asked me literally like last night, and I was like, okay. So, yes, Jesus. Um, so if I look at my notes, help me, Jesus. Um, no, but I get the honor of, of getting to speak with you guys tonight. I'm really excited because what we're going to talk about is the title is Lean Not. Can anyone do this with me? Say lean, but with attitude, say lean not. All right. I like you Wednesday night crowd. You know, and I had to ask myself, Alexis, do you live a life that fully trusts in God? And you know what my answer was? Heck yeah, totally. And then I was sitting there and I was thinking like, hey, do I live a life that lives fully trusted in God? I was like, shoot, no. I was like, dang. I just remember this situation. I was like, no, I didn't. You know, I was like hoping. And, and so we live life, you know, we, there's that scripture that, and I'm going to share it with you guys about trusting in God with all your heart. It's so easy to say it. It feels good to say it, but do you actually live it out? And that's something we're going to talk about tonight. <clears throat> and so we've never been called to do life alone. And too many times it seems like it's easier to do life alone. And um, yet you don't realize that by doing things alone, it creates this distance between you and God. And it creates a distance between you and the people that you have called to do life with. And that's what it's all about. It's being connected with God and being connected with people. That's why the church is so important. You're not meant to just sit home watching live stream. Not that I love live stream watchers. I love it because sometimes we're out of town. But we're been called to be connected at the vine, at the source, so that we can see all of God's goodness. Amen. You better preach. Yes, I'm just kidding. Side note, right? That's why you need the church. And we're one body and we can't do without each other. And I can tell you there's two people actually here. I don't know if they're here. But one is Maria. Maria, can you raise your hand right here? Maria, and I don't know if Jessica B's in here. Jessica, she's in the back. Okay, these two ladies, without them, I don't know what I would be doing. I probably wouldn't even be standing on stage here today because they have been so amazing and fighting for me in my life. So that's why you need to trust God. Come to church and see the connections you make. You can take that one to the bank. Anyways, <clears throat> so God is a God who cares about relationships. He is a God who loves relationships. He is a relationships. That's what it's all about. It's not about religion, right? You hear that we get tattoos. It's not about religion. It's about relationship. And you know what's so amazing is that this is something I'm learning day by day. He wants you to lean on him and to trust him. And the enemy wants to create distance, right? That's what we're talking about. He wants to create distance between you and God. And it's not even the pain he focuses on. Surprise. Pain will come and go. If he can get you to be distant from God, then he's got you. Have you ever felt like th there's just this distance? Like you're like, oh, God, why can't I come to you? Why can't I get on my knees? Have you ever felt that? Sorry, I want to be very active tonight. And that's, that's it. It's not the pain that he wants to get you at. He wants to get you from the beginning. Is there distance between you and God tonight? Because he's saying, I want to come close to you, and I want to already come in between all those questions, all those doubts, and I want to bring you in closer. And so today we're going to shut the mouth of the enemy. And you know that song that goes, let the devil know not today, not today. That's exactly what we're going to be doing. That's going to be skipping out of this place like that. So we're going to look at the word tonight. Are you ready to look at the word? So when I speak with the worship team, I have them say weird things like, oh, if when you're there, you say, oh, but I won't let you do that. So I want you to go to Proverbs. Sorry, I'm too much. Proverbs 3, verse 5 through 6. And when you're there, I want you to say, holla, but with attitude, okay? Holla, when you're there. All right, you better be flipping those pages. I mean it. You guys should say holla. Thank you. 
Yesterday I had an axe with me, and I told him, if you don't say this, I'm going to ask you a question here. All right. <laughs> I'm too much. <laughs> ah! Okay, it says Proverbs 3, 5 through 6. Don't worry, I'm getting serious. I am very serious. It says, just kidding, I'm not. Okay, bring it in. <laughs> Joy is good. It's like laughter is a good medicine, huh? I need a good dose of that today. It says, trust in the Lord with all your heart. And lean not on your own understanding. In all your ways submit to him, and he will make your path straight. God never called us to lean on our own understanding. What is our own understanding? The moment we stop trying to figure out God is the moment we can finally be still and know that he is God over our life. You have to stop. And you have to say, no, God is over my life. He loves me. He cares for me. He has the best in mind for me. And that's what happens when you choose to trust in him with everything you have. And he says, trust me with all your heart. He didn't say trust me with half your heart. God does not want 50% of you. He doesn't want 99.9999999% of you. He wants the whole package of you. He wants your ugly tears. He wants your snots. He wants the, you know, those crazy conversations only you and him have in the car. He wants those hard moments. He wants those high moments where you feel like I have the victory. That's the God that we serve. We serve a God that is not afraid of where we've been, who's not afraid of where we're going, who's not afraid of where you're at right now. That is not, God is a God of, of love and of clarity and of vision and of purpose. And that's why I love what we're singing today of reckless love because it is reckless. You know, people can get all like fuchi and like, mm. Reckless is reckless because it doesn't make sense in the natural, but in the spirit, it tears out all of our natural tendencies and our thinking. All right, y'all. Okay, so he wants to cancel out the lies you have lived with for so long and pour in his truth into your situation. And how many of you want to hear what God has for your life? Raise your hand. I know I do. Come on. And each one of us, without knowing, lean on something, right? We always hear lean on our own understanding, but what is it that we're leaning on? So I want you to write this down because I'm a teacher and you're in class today. All right, ready? Okay, questions on the board as well. Hey, what you lean on shapes, number one, how you think. Number two, on point, how you act. And number three, how you look. So what you lean on shapes how you think. What are you thinking? What are you thinking about yourself? Are you going around saying, God, I'm stupid, or dang, I shouldn't have said that? Or are you going around saying, you know what, I have the mind of Christ. I have a spirit of power, love, and a sound mind. Is that what you're thinking? What's going on in your in your mind and how you act. I know I can tell you this confidently. I know I'm a wonderful person, the best daughter in the whole entire planet, but I do not live like that 24 seven. How are you acting? How do you respond to things? Are you responding or are you reacting towards your situation? And this whole week I was reacting towards so many situations. I had to say, forgive me to so many people. Um, how do you look? You know, you carry yourself, you carry a demeanor. Do you look like this? Like just like super smiling or do you look like I had so many people come up to me this week. They're like, are you okay? I'm like, please don't ask me that one more time. But you know what? It's a check. Like, what have I been leaning on? What have I been meditating on? Because that's how I'm going to perceive right here. God didn't call us to be fake, but he did call you to walk in faith and to be okay with where you're at, but to get back up. Amen. That's why I'm up here, because I'm like, Jesus, I was crying on the floor last night. <laughs> and maybe the things that you lean on is fear. Maybe it's anxiety. Maybe you lean on doubts. Maybe it's relationships. Maybe it's friendships. Maybe you're even leaning on your marriage. You're leaning on your season. You're leaning on so many different things. When God asks you, hey, lean on me. Trust me. I have your back. I have everything for you. So don't be leaning on people who aren't close to God as well. Remember how I told you I have two people here, Mari and Jessica? Don't be leaning on people who aren't consistent. What, what are you doing? It says don't be unequally yoked. Like, yes, you have your friends, but who are you leaning on? Also, God brings people around you, but he doesn't want you throwing up everything in front of people who are not going to bring you back to the word of God. Because the word of God is what sets you free. It's his truth that sets us free. So I want you to take a friend inventory tonight, okay? I'll be looking for you all, too. And you know what? As I was thinking about this, okay, we lean on fear, you know, doubt, anxiety, all these things. And so I thought of a man in the Bible. How many of you know about Moses? Good old Prince of Egypt. Anyone seen the movie? You, shall, you all should watch it. All right. We're going to go to Numbers 20, verses 3 through 12. And you can put it on the screen. Thank you. When you're there, say, okay. 
I love you guys. <laughs> okay. It says, they quarreled with Moses and said, if only we had died when our brothers fell dead before the Lord. Dang, these are the people he's surrounded with. I don't know about you, but I don't want to be leaning on them. I want to be punching them. All right, let's keep going. See, this is my bad side that you're seeing. <laughs> okay, why did you bring the Lord's community into this wilderness that we and our livestock should die here? Why did you bring us up out of Egypt to this terrible place? It has no grain or figs, grapevines or pomegranates. I'm hungry and there is no water to drink. Moses and Aaron went from the assembly to the entrance to the tent of a meeting and fell face down. And the glory of the Lord appeared to them. Okay, you can stop right there and I just hit myself with the mic. So God met them. Okay? God met Moses and Aaron. You would think that they would be like, okay, God, I trust you. Let's keep going. To verse 7. The Lord said to Moses, take the staff, and you and your brother Aaron gather the assembly together. Speak to that rock before their eyes, and it will pour out its water. You will bring water out of the rock for the community so they and their livestock can drink. God literally gives them specific instruction. Okay, he literally speaks from heaven. I want God to just speak to me from heaven so I already know what's going on. Many times I don't even hear his voice. I just feel that utterance in my spirit like, okay, this is what he's saying. But look how amazing God is. He's literally telling them. All right, next one. Oh, that is it. All right, so Moses took the staff from the Lord's presence just as he commanded him. He and Aaron gathered the assembly together in front of the rock, and Moses said to them, listen, you rebels. Must we bring you out, must we bring you water out of this rock, you rebels? Then Moses raised his arm and struck the rock twice with his staff. Water gushed out and the community and their livestock drank. But the Lord said to Moses and Aaron, because you did not trust in me enough to honor me as holy in the sight of Israelites, you will not bring this community into the land I give them. Ouch. I don't know about you, but... I know that when I trust God, it also has people attached to it. You know, even doing worship, I hated doing worship before. I didn't want to be a worship leader. I didn't want to be a singer. My parents always be like, filming me like, sing Alexa. And I'd be like, Ow! You know, and, but I realize now that if I didn't choose to trust God with something that he gave me, I don't think I would be doing what I'm doing today. I don't think I would see people like, Worship is awesome. We get to create and we get to do music. You know, like that's something that I know I'm called to do. And to see what God does in a place is like the most exciting and riveting thing for me. And so I know that when I trusted to choose him, I chose to trust him, that he says there's also all these people attached to you. And so know this, that it's not just you trusting in God, but when you trust in God, he's able to release you. He's able to promote you. He's able to bring you to people that need to know Jesus, that need to hear, hey, you can do it because I did it in this moment, in this season, when when I thought I was out, when I was down, when I thought I was ugly, but I'm beautiful. You know, like, I'm being serious. You're attached to someone's destiny of knowing Jesus. And it's in one word, trust. And it's such a beautiful word, but it's so hard of a process. <clears throat> I would know I'm in one. <laughs> We're all in one. You know, and all God asks of us is to trust him. He says, I want to hear when I get to heaven me personally, well done, good and faithful servant. I don't want to hear, Alexis, only if you would have just trusted me, you would have seen this. Only if you would have just trusted me with this. Macy, only if you would have just trusted me with this, you would have seen this. Jasmine, only if you would have just trusted me with this, you would have seen this. And I believe that God is calling us and he's saying, hey, you have this chance. You're here on earth for a purpose. Go for it. Run with it. Trust in me. Don't let anything hold you back. And I'm very passionate about this because I have allowed so many things to hold me back. And mainly, it's me. So that's the worst because there's no one else fighting me but me, punching myself. But God is saying, hey, get up, rise up, trust in me, and watch and see what I'll do. And it's time that, you know, we allowed the pain in life and issues of our heart to not rob us from the rest he promised us. We all go through pain. We all go through seasons. But know this is that at the end of your season, God is there. He's created every season, summer, winter, fall, spring, everything in between. And he's saying, will you just trust in me today? And anything that comes from God is good. He's asking you today to not lean on the pain or disappointments or the wrong people in your life. But today he asks you to lean on him and trust in him. And I can tell you this, that if you would just trust in him, 
the very best is about to break through in your life. And God will never leave you. He'll never forsake you. He loves you. He's called you. He's purposed you. And he's just saying, hey, where are you? Because I'm ready to hit the ground running with you. <laughs> That's my bike as we go running. But, yeah, so I just wanted to talk about that and, and just let you know that, you guys, Elevate Church is going somewhere. If you ever feel uncomfortable, good, because we are a church of uncomfortability because God never called us to be comfortable. He called us to be uncomfortable because when we're uncomfortable, we get to fulfill everything God has called on our life. So thank you for listening to me. <laughs> Here's my mom. You did amazing. I'm so proud of you. I don't know if I need taller shoes, but I feel like I got shorter. I don't know. But praise God, that was awesome. You know, I know a lot about leaning. You know, uh, who, who's a leaner here? Right? And not leaning to the, to the things that we are called to lean on, right? God didn't say lean on things. And too bad I didn't think about me, what about coming up, you know, because I'm wor working on creativity. I'm speaking life about myself. I, I said, I was, I said, she's preaching. I'm like, she's giving a word, right, in season. I'm thinking, ah, I should have just woke up and, I mean, walk up to the stage and, and, and play the song. Lean on me. You see, that's why I'm not allowed to sing. But. <laughs> but sometimes we are leaning, and I, as every time I get in the word of God, uh, you need the word of God daily. That's one thing that I have learned, to have the word, to put the word of God in you daily. Because there is no way to trust God if I do not know who he is. Right? If I only get my information from which is awesome, and, I, and, and, I, and my husband always reminds me, Virginia, the, the, the people that come Wednesday night, they're, they're the hardcore. They're the ones that, you know, they're going all the way in because you're, you're taking an extra day to come and to, and to learn and to practice what you're hearing because the word is just, it's just not to be heard. The word is to be experienced, is to be lived out. Faith is to be lived out. It's not just something that we proclaim or we say our faith. So as I was studying, uh, for, for the message, as you know, I started the, uh, I always jump around. I, I started Monsters, Inc., right? I'm like, this is part of Monsters, Inc. You know, it's everything, the battle, and we hear it. It's so many books out there, and we always hear that the battle starts where? In the mind. And then many times uh, you think there is easy. There is so many times that I thought that I was good. I was. I, I am. I knew that I was leaning on God. Oh, I thought that I was leaning on God, because there's levels of uh, you know, of problems. There's levels of storms, right? There's levels of uh, even Wi-Fi. We have levels now. So, so, so you you know, if you're in a mild problem, you're like you. Know, you have won some victories, and we do have the victory in Jesus' name. But when we get to a certain level, because we've been exercising our faith, and it could be that you're facing something that is very, it's very hard for you. Like there is something that I, I was facing, and, 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 and I'm still in the process, but I thought to myself, how did I get here? Have you ever had that question? Ask the question to yourself, like, how did I arrive in this place? It's, uh, you hear the story about Moses. Moses did not arrive. To, it was 40 years of living with people that constantly were, you know, were nagging. They were naggers. There were people, he was uh, surrounded with people that were constantly not only nagging, complaining. They were never happy. They were not even happy who his wife was. They were talking about him, his own family. I mean, he lived a very, a very problematic and conflictive life. And he stayed the course for many years, right? But I thought he didn't get, he didn't get overnight to that place where he was, the Lord said, he, the Lord spoke, and we're so funny, like Alexis says, we want to hear God, like I want steps, 
I want him to show me from, if you're asking me to go from A to uh, D, I want to know how A looks like, B looks like, C looks like, D looks like. I want to know for me. I want details. Give me the intel, right? But then even when God gives us the intel and tells us what to do, we still choose to do what we want. The majority of times is because you have come to lean on your own understanding. And if we could put the same verse, but we do it in the uh, a passion, yes, the TPT. Trust in the Lord completely and do not rely on what? On your own opinions. Sometimes we don't see because the other, the other verse is, is lean on. Lean not on your own understanding. And he says, trust the Lord with all your heart, right? So you're thinking that you're trusting the Lord. But if you're still literally laying, leaning on, right, on your own understanding, in your own opinions, you're not really trusting God. And he says, with all you have relied on him to guide you. And he will lead you in every decision you make. So I thought, Virginia, if you were leaning on God in the little, if we can't lean on God on the little problems, we're never going to lean on God when, when, when Hiroshima hits. I mean, truly. There's people, and I'm going to go into this, and it's not because I'm a pastor, but there is people that said, you know, one day I'm going to, 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 I'm going to be tithing. I'm, one day I'm going to start tithing. Right now I can because I'm not, I, don't, I don't have enough. And, and, you know, but one day I know that I will. As I was uh, studying, I thought to myself, you know, when we came to the Lord, my husband and I, I mean, we, we came from no Christianity, from no religious background. We were heathens to the wazoo. Have you met people like that? Okay, we were one of them. Do your Google research, heathens to the wazoo. See, our pictures are going to come out, right, <laughs> from 20-something years ago. I still look the same, but um, <laughs> a side note, my daughter gives side note. But I thought when we came to the Lord, we had to start learning to trust God. And you know when you're poor, that's different, right, because I came from poverty. I remember, and I'm going to give out, like, okay, so I used to work for Robinson's Mate then, and now it's Macy's, right? But I used to work for Robinson's Mate, and you work your tail off, and, and they, I remember my, my, my check for in two weeks was like $200, you know? And I thought, when, as I was reading and trying to lean to trust God, so now I want to trust God. Now I need to learn how to be generous because now I don't belong to this kingdom anymore, the kingdom of poverty because Jesus is a generous God he only gives and gives and gives and gives and so I remember my husband and I sitting on our little dining table that we could not even afford a lot of furniture there were dates I never forgot it you, you always go back to your beginning because God was so good when you decided to trust him when you had nothing but I remember that we made a decision and we said, you know, if the Bible says, because you have to take the Bible into, into entirety from beginning to end. I can't choose. Like, you know, I don't like numbers. Who likes numbers, right? But you have to read it. Right? Some people just love reading Proverbs and Psalms. And so people, you know, how, when was the last time you read Amos, right? You're like, who's Amos? Not, not the cookie. Like the Bible. Right? So you decide to discover and to lean on. So if I'm not going to lean on my own opinion and how I was brought up, then I need to learn how God views life and how he thinks that I should live out this new purpose. So I remember having like becoming partners. And they said, as soon as you become partners, they gave you no choice. You have to start serving. And I was like, ah. You know what, lean not on your own understanding. And, and, and I cried. I cried for like the first three years serving because it was too much for me, but I did it. How do you overcome? You do it. Right? So I, I would be shaking and doing all these things, and you couldn't even talk to me. I would always be like hiding from people. And I could have been a spy because I was so good. <laughs> you know, that was, I think that's how they, it, whoever probably met me in those times, they, they got the born. You know the movie? What was the? See that you watch, huh? Okay, so 
He's walking, right? You see, he's trying to get away. A bus is coming by, and all of a sudden, he's not there. Okay, that was me at church. There, there comes a pastor. There's a pope, and all of a sudden, like, where did she go? Like, hiding, hiding, of wherever. But I decided to make a choice to not lean on what I knew and how I felt. And I always say, this is my personality, why they're trying to stretch me. Uh, because God wants to stretch you. He wants to expound, expand you. He wants to elevate you. He has a better life. And he knows that he will never ask you to do anything if it's not in your ability to do so. And you, it is in your ability to do so because we have the Holy Spirit living inside of us, right? So, but I remember this time and we decided, like, mind you, he was working at the time. Uh, and this is our beginning. He was working, like, three jobs to provide for the family. And I would work one job and, and, then, and then my daughter, Alexis. And I remember that we said the moment we heard, you know, the Bible says that the tenth belongs to God. It's not even yours. And we're like, well, I'm like, okay, that means we're not going to have 20. I mean, out of my $200, you know. So I'm like, okay, so that means that I'm not going to have $20. For the month. Well, it got paid twice, so I'm not going to have $40. So, and he says, well, that means that I'm not going to have this amount. But, and I remember we both sat in the, in the table, and Alexis sat there too because she was always in between us. And so she sat, she sat there, and we come in agreement and said, in this house, we're going to serve God. In this house, I never forgot, in this house, we made a proclamation. We break poverty. In, in the Ruiz family. But do you know when you're in such a need, $20 is $20. So I agree. I said, yes. Okay. And we both used to get paid in different times. And then um, I remember when, when it was my first time to give. You know, I, I remember seating and, and, and I was like, my heart is going out. They were going to already, uh, you know, ask for tithes and offerings and but I, there was such an excitement. There was such an excitement for me to write a check. Because in those times you wrote checks, right? So I was like writing a check. And then I said, I'm going to be generous. I'm going to give 20 and 50 cents. But see, God knew that my 50 cents came out of my need. It didn't come out of my abundance. And I was so excited. And then when my husband gave his tithe, he's like, oh, my God. And I gave $5 more. And we were like, yes. Yes, we're doing it. Okay, so you train yourself. You train yourself in your little moments, in your little battles that we start. Because if you can trust God with $10, to give God even a dollar out of, your, out of your ten dollars, you will never trust him to give him out of a millions, but you want him to give it to you, right? But then you're still leaning on your own understanding. You're still leaning on how the world views finances. And I'm not saying this so I can move you to give. No, you, 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 you do an inventory tonight and you have to say, okay, what am I leaning on? Do, am I, do, my, do my heart, does my heart reflect that I trust God? Or does my heart reflect that I still trust my own opinion? And then we start and we invite doubt, right? Like doubt is one of the biggest, I think one of the biggest monsters that come to steal and kill and destroy the purpose that God has for us. Because I always go back to, I'm going to use the same story that Alexis said about Moses. You know, at some point he got so exhausted. At some point he got disappointed. At some point he said, wow, Lord, I left, who knows, you know, you just dream with me. Like, you know, we read the Bible and we think it's just like, oh, they're just like the prince of Egypt, right? No, no, he wasn't. Uh, animation he was a person just like you and me that made choices but then I thought maybe along the way he got so sick and tired of being sick and tired he got so sick of the people and then he thought like 
I can do better. I can do better. And then doubt started to hit his mind and say, you know what? I, yeah, I know that God told me to speak to, to the rock. But he didn't, he didn't do what God told them because when I started reading that scripture, and this was many years ago, I used to get mad at God because, you know, I was one of those Christians, but you're still, like, very feisty with the word. Like, I don't like it. Why didn't you let him in? Why can't you just forgive him? The guy just made one mistake, one mistake. No, you don't make one mistake. That was just the top, the cherry on the top, right, that he got him there. And I said, but why is it that you did not allow him? God says, speak. He said, I want you to speak to the rock. But he decided to hit it because that was, that was his comfort. Remember at the beginning, he says, what do you have in your hand? And then sometimes, what, what do you have in your hand? Maybe you have your gifting and you're so used, used, used to, this is the gifting. So I'm going to do whatever my talent. And this is what I can do with my eyes closed. This is what I know how to do. This is what I solve problems. This is how I know how to de deal with uh, family problems. This is not how I, do, I deal with uh, financial problems. This is how I do, deal with relationships. So you already think you know it all. But God is saying, no, I don't want you. I don't want you to do it the way that you've been doing it today. I'm going to have you to speak to that rock. And, right? And he was out. And I thought, and I started to think about, like, every person in the Bible, if you read every person in the Bible, every person in the Bible dealt with doubt. Do you deal with doubt? Only five here. The rest of you? You better be like, I don't know how many people you have already in your, in your lineup that you have uh, not only mentor, your family should be in top shape. No, 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 we all deal with doubt. And if you're, if you're, if you're good and awesome, good, then go from grade to grade S. But my point is, in the Bible, I, I'm going to tell you that God is not even... God is not even, not even moved by our doubts. Do you know that? He really is not moved by it. Because we're constantly thinking, right? Sometimes we go and tell him, and sometimes we feel that we're, oh, I went to God and I spoke to God just when we get the, you know, a little bit valiant and we go and tell God our doubts. But we usually don't. But you think of them. So they're there. They're in there. Your doubts are in there. And, and God doesn't mind. But I think of one of the guys in the Bible, like, that he started pretty good. Because you can start pretty good. So that's why you can never say, you know what, I don't need that message. I'm already good. I, I have my, I lean on, on, on the word of God. I trust God. Well, do you trust God with everything? Do you trust God only with your spouse if you're married? But your kids, because right now they're acting now, I, I don't know, God. I don't know if you might do it. You know what, that's... That's what doubt looks like. Doubt looks like that. Like, God, I know that you're powerful, but I don't know if you're good to me. God, I know that in the Bible says that you give grace, but I don't know if you're for me. Okay, so we, without knowing, we mix in faith and we mix in doubt together. So God will always know. Doubt's always going to come. It's going to be knocking at your heart, knocking in your mind. And, and he's always, this doubt is always going to come and question what God already said about us. Right? And believe me, many times I sat with doubt. We, I, we, we went on vacation. I have dinners with doubt. Then I got in the kind of got serious commitment with doubt, right? I almost married doubt because you're so serious. Then, then that, that doubt has become your reality. It becomes our reality. And believe me, I've been in every place and I know what it is to be, to be in doubt with God. And I know what it is to be in doubt period without God. It's better to be in doubt with God. But there's a story that always makes me kind of like sad, and it's about John the Baptist. But let me give you why no time, time. Proverbs 28 to 60, 26 says this. He who trusts in his own heart is a fool. But whoever walks wisely will be what? Delivered. Thank you for helping me. 
in the Passion Translation says, self-confident, knows it all, will prove to be what? Fools. But when you lean on the wisdom from above, you will have a way to escape the troubles of your own making. Because many times we, have, we are dealing with a lot of troubles and not all of them, okay? I'm not saying, oh, everything is your problem. No, there is a devil. We have an enemy. But there is many issues in our lives. They're our own making because we're still leaning on our own opinion, leaning on what we believe. And when you lean on what you believe, it will sway you. It will capture you. Because thou would always, thou has a friend and that friend is unbelief. And once we enter unbelief, then that's when God says, you know what? A heart that has unbelief is a wicked heart. Not me. I'm not calling you wicked. He says it's a wicked heart. So it, it doesn't say a doubtful heart is a wicked heart. It says a heart that has unbelief. Because that meant you have allowed all the doubt to dwell in. And now you're, you're changing your mind. But I'm going to tell you that in the midst of that, God is such a, he's so full of grace. Let us, let me tell you a little bit about John the Baptist. Do you know about John the Baptist? No, it's not the one from Grace Baptist. This is Jesus' cousin. John the Baptist, as we know, they were family with Jesus, right? We read it was Mary was cousins with Elizabeth. And, and you have to start reading in John first. And which, you know, there's, he said at the beginning of, of, of his life, he says, um, I really don't know Jesus. I was like, how do you don't know Jesus? If, your mom didn't tell you. You know, when I get to heaven, I'm going to ask Elizabeth, how come you didn't tell him? You know, he probably could have done more, but this is just my, my own. You see how creative I am? Okay, so let, let's go. Uh, let's go with uh, John, if we could put my first scripture with John. We have it, John. Okay. So this is John. This is his journey. So John... Is the one who baptized Jesus, right? He's in the desert. He's proclaiming there's a Messiah coming, right? And he's very strange. He's weird. He eats grasshoppers from Oaxaca, from Jerusalem. So I completely understand him now. I'm like, that's a good diet, you know. I can do that in honey, and it's pretty, a pretty good meal. But he was there alone, and he's proclaiming that Messiah is coming. But he's the first one to say, to say this. He says, I have seen and testified that this is the Son of God. So now he believes and he believes that he believes that he heard from heaven. He doesn't even know. Like it goes back, if you go back into Isaiah, he's repeating what was already prophesied. So he's saying, this is the son of God. And not only does he say that and proclaims it in front of all this multitude of peoples and his disciples, but then he gets to see, it says that he saw, and I, I encourage you to read all John first, uh, First chapter and then he says that he saw the Holy Spirit descending upon Jesus like a dove and that's when he heard the voice so he he uh, can you imagine like I like to say we, we read it and we're like but can you imagine he not only baptizes Jesus but then he hears the voice of God like clearly the voice of God and he sees the Spirit of God Holy Spirit descending upon Jesus I mean I was like what I mean, my life would be like, oh, I will never doubt. This is it. This is Jesus, right? And then later on, what he does is he goes to, into a little, you know, he goes into a little, a, a little tangent. He goes into a little trip. Later on in John, if you put the other one, John 3.30. Okay, now it's only, we only have a few chapters, right? So first he said he's the son of God. But now he says, now he has, that has become his conviction. That has become his belief. You know, he is the son of God. He has come to save the world. And so by now, he's now moving from conviction. This is what I believe. Now he is declaring. He says, he's telling his disciples. He says that he must increase. Who? Jesus. He says, I must decrease. Do you know how many times I have said that and I have prayed and I have preached? Lord, let you be increased. I want you to increase and I want to decrease. Do you know how easy it is to say that? When I feel like I'm increasing, when everything is well. But then we're going to take the story now, uh, we're going to take the story back to Matthew. So he goes from, from believing 
his faith, this is the son of God. Now I'm going to make a declaration. I must decrease, he must increase, and now I'm here. Now I'm in trouble. Okay, he never thought that in, in I, I, I think about like, what were they thinking? Because this is what he was thinking. He says in Matthew, we're talking about the same story. It says when John had heard in prison, he's now listening and paying attention about the works of Christ. He sent two of his disciples and said to him, are you the coming one or do we look for another? I mean, this is John. John, that he just a few chapters I don't know how long it took, but it was a few chapters that he just declared that he's the one, right? He says, this is the son of God. He must increase. I must decrease. But now I'm in trouble. Now I'm in prison. Now I'm in darkness. Now I'm in a place that I never thought that I was going to be in my life. And now things are getting fuzzy. I can't see. And I hear that Jesus is doing this. And if Jesus is doing that, why can't he take me out of this pit? So I'm going to send two of my guys, and I want you to go ask them. Go ask them. Okay, what, what does those two questions say to you? Doubt. Are you the coming one? Or should I be waiting for someone else to come? Because now I'm in prison, I can't go to the desert. So I don't know. Just let me know so I can train my new disciples. Right? Let's go to the other verses. I think it's four. Coming up. Okay, Matthew 4 says, Jesus answered and said to them. So Jesus received. Jesus is so good. I'm like, Jesus, you are amazing. This guy just sent two of his top executives, right? And they, and they want to meet with Jesus. But they don't want to meet with Jesus just to get an audience. They're coming and they're saying, hey, our leader, John, your cousin, who proclaimed that you are the son of God. He wants to know, are you really the son of God or are we waiting for somebody? And this is what Jesus answers in verse 4 to 6. Jesus answered and said to them, go and tell John the things which you have heard and see. The blind see, the lame walk, the lepers are cleansed, and the deaf hear. The dead are raised from the dead, raised up, and the poor have the gospel preached to them. And blessed is he who is not offended because of me. Do you know that many times we don't see offense as doubt? When you start, when you allow offense in your heart, you already doubted everything that God said. Without knowing, he went into like, but he says, blessed is he who is not offended because of me. Because you thought that I was going to be, we already have an idea. We, we, we sang today that we want miracles to happen. That we want to see the lame walk. That we want to see the blind see. That we want to see the mute speak. But I want to see it. And maybe in your own opinion, you already have to have a picture. How is that going to look like? So if it doesn't look like that, we don't agree with it. And then we get offended with God. But you said, you promised me, you gave me, you gave me a promise. And you gave me a promise that you were never going to leave me. How is it that I feel alone today? You gave me a promise that my finances were going to be better. But this year, actually, I went into a greater debt. You promised me that you were going to heal me. But then now I just got another diagnostic and it doesn't look like you're healing me. You promise. And without knowing, we become already, we're offended at God. We're mad at God. But do you know that I just want to tell you that God is not moved by your offenses if you go to him? Well, how do I know that? Because in verse 7, this is what he says. As they departed, Jesus began to say to the multitudes concerning John, What did you go out into the wilderness to see? A reed shaken by the wind? But what did you go out to see? A man clothed in soft garments? Indeed. Those who wear soft clothing are king's houses, are in king's houses. But what did you go out to see? A prophet? Yes, I say to you, and more than a prophet, for this is he of whom he is, it is written. Behold, I send my messenger before your face who will prepare your way before you. 
As surely I say to you, among those born of women, there has not risen one greater than John the Baptist. God didn't say, you know what? If you see my cousin, I'm here preaching, healing. I'm talking to multitudes. And he has the audacity to send two of his disciples to ask if I'm the one. He didn't go into a defense mode. He didn't went into a reaction. He went into compassion. And he said, let me tell you about this man. He's one of the greatest men that have ever been born, raised by someone. And so I don't know where you are in life today. And maybe we have, you have been having tons of doubts. And maybe those doubts have led you to unbelief. And maybe the unbelief have, has led you even to denial. What's denial? You, you're denying the word of God. You're granting the lies to be your truth. And believe me, believe me, I have done a lot of access. I have done, I have given a lot of access to my own thoughts, to what the enemy says about me, to what other people think of me. I have spent a lot of, if I, if I can count the hours, I probably have years throughout my life as a Christian. Because I have given access because I have given access to myself to lean on my own understanding, to rely. And to lean means to rely, to stay. You need to stay. You know, my husband was talking about being stuck. That means that you're staying. And no one can convince you otherwise because you already made up your own opinion. And no matter how God, whoever God sends, no matter how he wants to speak to you, you won't listen because you want God to talk to you the way that he used to talk to you be like before. One of the things that God told me, Virginia, well, at some point in my life, I was, um, oh, and if you continue to read it, it, it goes into say that, it says that since then, since John the Baptist's death, it says that the kingdom of heaven suffers violence and the violence take it by force. We don't take it by doubt. We take it by force. You're going to force yourself. I'm going to force my mind to believe. Virginia, stop believing those lies. Do you know how hard that is? Do you know how hard that is to, when you're living a different reality that God told you, no, this is your reality. This is why you're having me, but this is what you have. This is why you breathe. This is what you see every day. Do you know how difficult it is to do it alone unless you come in agreement with God? And you have to come in agreement with God. And that's all he needs. He needs your agreement and you need the right people. You need the right people in your life. You cannot say that you trust God and you cannot trust people. Believe me, I had to come to those terms, Virginia. You need people. You need people. I need you. I'm not my own island. No, we need people. We, you need the body of Christ. You need a church. And there is no church that is perfect because you came. Because I came. There is no perfect church. And we're looking for the perfect friend, the perfect maid, the perfect husband, the perfect wife, the perfect children. There is no such thing. But there is perfection in Jesus Christ. But he can perfect those things that concern us. But I think it's time for you and I to do an inventory and say, what am I leaning on? What am I giving access to? Who am I giving access to? Some people that you have in your life, they shouldn't have access to you. Because at the end of the day, if they lead you away from God, or away from, from, from Jesus, away from, oh, don't go there because people are hypocrites. You know, we all have been hypocrites. All of us. You go, not me, Pastor. Okay, then you're the first one. <laughs> oh, those people don't know how to be this. Be, uh, shut up. We've all been there. We've all been there. That's what we're doing. We're doing a rehearsal, a dress rehearsal in this, on this earth. And we're learning how to trust God. But I cannot say that I trust God if I, I, don't, I can't trust some people. And be risky and lean on. And when God says, you know what, Virginia, I want you to love even if you get hurt. Who wants to sign up for that? I'm like, not me. 
I don't want to sign up to be hurt. I'm already hurt. But then if I stay there, then I'm going to stay and I'm going to lean on on who I am by myself. What other people have said, what the devil believes about me. So I have a choice. And I'm preaching here tonight because I have a choice. And I'm choosing in the midst of my crap. Because there are crappy things in life, right? Crap is it's a safe word. Maybe not on Sunday, but Wednesday, come. I will give you a few words that are safe. Crap, stupid, and. But what is God asking you? God is asking you to trust Him. To trust Him. Trust Him today. You know, pain, like Alexis said, pain, it's pain, and we, pain comes with life. If you're gonna give birth to a baby, you're gonna have pain. Right? No, people want to give life to new dreams, want to do new things, but I don't want pain. So pain comes with it. So pain is not the problem. The problem is, is what do we do when it comes? Would you stay in doubt? Would you, would you allow from doubt you, you, you graduate to unbelief? And to unbelief you graduate to denial or you deny what God says. And you become a judge to God. And then we're mad at the world, we're mad at God, we're mad at, I'd be mad to everyone at some point in my life. But you know the good thing about God is that he says, repent. Jesus said, if you hear my word tonight or today, because it's all about today, right? It's all about the blank. Is that a song? But it's all about today. I hear songs when I preach. It's all about today because I don't have tomorrow. Because it hasn't come yet. But I have today. And he says, today if you hear my voice. And he says, if you choose to repent. If you choose to turn around and change the way that you are, have been viewing life, doing life. And thinking your own thing. He says, I will reconcile you to me. And I believe that God wants to reconcile so many of you because you still have chosen to believe your own thing. And you think you're believing in God, trusting God, but you're not. You're just a very pissed off person. Is that a safe word on Wednesday? Never repeat it on the, because my husband's not here. Don't say it on a Sunday. Just say, very upset and grieving. But I've been there. And that's a dangerous place to be. Because then you start blaming. Then you start, and then without knowing, you went from you being a few feet away to walk into your promised land to just see it from far. What could have been, what should have been, but didn't happen because I chose it. No one chose it for me. No one can make me upset. No one can make me feel things. No, I feel them because I give access to them. So God wants you to trust them and he wants to exchange tonight with you. And I want you to close your eyes and bow your heads. But he wants to do an exchange with you tonight. What's that exchange? And everybody, please, this is a moment that I really believe that this is a prophetic word. And I want you just to close your eyes. And I'm just doing this so, you know, you don't feel like who's looking. Let's see who raises your hand. But God is telling you, you need to stop being afraid of pain. You need to stop being afraid of what's to come. You need to stop being afraid that he's not going to do it for you. Some of you think that he left you. Let me tell you that he does not leave us. He never leaves us. One thing is to feel lonely and one thing is to be lonely. Let me tell you that you can feel lonely, but you are not lonely. Not according to the word. He says that he was going to take 
every sickness and disease upon the cross. He took it already 2,000 years ago. So if you're sick in body, you can say, you know what? If you took it, then let, let that be my reality today. I am going to be whole. I am whole in Jesus' mighty name. You might feel like dying, but you have to say it. Maybe your marriage is dying. Maybe your family is falling apart. Maybe your finances are falling apart. Or maybe you just feel unhappy. But then today you need to choose. And you need to choose that you, you trust God. Lord, what you start, you finish. You're my alpha. You're my omega. You're my beginning. You're my end. I only a pencil and you do whatever. You can start a new chapter if I choose to close my old chapter. If I choose to leave behind how I was thinking and doing things, I know that you, you forgive me the moment that I repent. I don't need to go to a conference to be forgiven. You can get right with God tonight. Because there's so many of you I see right now, and I'm going to tell you that God is allowing me to see dreams right here. Businesses right here. Things that God has given you and I can see, I can point you out, I can see it like a flame up above your head. But they have not come to pass, not because God doesn't want to. It's because we have agreed with the lie. We have agreed with the doubt. And we have access, given access to the enemy to be our counselor. No, we have a counselor and his name is the Holy Ghost. So if you're ready to say, you know what, I repent, Lord. Because we need to repent. There is no other way. We need to repent and say, forgive me, Father God, for, for fighting my own will. For being so caught up in where I've been. Forgive me. But today is a new day. And today I'm not going to harden my heart. Today I receive your word. And I'm in right standing with you. And I call myself, myself just. So that's you. I want you to raise your hand. Raise your hand. Be bold. Be valiant. Remember. The kingdom, whatever it's of the kingdom, we only take it by force. And if you're like, oh, I don't want to raise my hand, because force your hand up. And say, you know what, I'm going to be that, it's going to be me. I'm going to get what God has promised. If today's message impacted you in any way, and you want to help us spread the gospel with a financial gift, text the number below. And we know that someone's life will be changed the same way that yours was today.